Hello and welcome to your favorite show, Identities Umhlobo, your TV show that comes to you every week on Wednesdays. And thank you for joining us today. 16 days of activism are days set aside globally to discuss the issues of vulnerabilities of girls and women uh, around gender-based violence uh, that hinder them from you know, doing anything else in their lives. But most importantly, as a human rights violation. And we chose as identities uh, to talk to female leaders. And today in the studio, again, we are privileged to have uh, Ambassador Bronte Moss uh, from the Australian Embassy. Ambassador, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Lovely to be here. Thank you. Um, so again, <coughs> what fascinates us is the notion of women in leadership. And uh, women in leadership, because we know that there's something that happens when women um, are in leadership, especially relating to dealing with gender-based violence and women's empowerment at large. So before we get into the flesh of it, I want to understand who Ambassador Bronte Moss is and where your leadership journey started. Well, thank you very much. Well, it's great to have the opportunity to talk to you about these really important issues for everybody. Um, so I'm, I'm Bronte Mills. I'm Australia's ambassador to Zimbabwe. Right. Um, I've been in the country only seven months or so, so I'm fairly new, but I'm, I'm basically a career diplomat. When I finished university, I joined the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade and have been on numerous wonderful postings around the world since then. So I'm, I'm delighted to be here in Zimbabwe at this um, important time in the country's history. But in terms of my journey, I have to say, I've been extremely fortunate um, and had, in many respects, a very easy journey. And when I think about that, I think it's interesting to 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 think about why, what was easy, what made mm. it so good for me. And there are a couple of things that stand out. One is my education. Um, I was lucky to go to a school where I went to an all-girls school, but where gender issues just didn't feature. There was never any question that girls there was any constraints mm. on what girls could do. So there was never any notion even of being limited. So right from the time I was started my education, the opportunities and the scope to do whatever you wanted to do was there. Um, but even before that, I think about my upbringing in my family. Again, I grew up in a household where gender wasn't an issue, where my brothers and I, there was no distinction. We could all do whatever we wanted. Um, so for me, I was brought up with that very solid surrounding of you're female, it's not even it's not even a relevant issue. You can do whatever you want to do and be whatever you want to be. So I think I was very fortunate um, to have that upbringing compared to my mother, I should say. Yeah. So it's interesting to look one generation right. back um, who grew up in a household uh, with two boys and two girls in the family. The boys were allowed to finish school. The girls were only allowed to do sewing and cooking at school and left when they were quite young. Um, and I think that had a big impact on my mother, who then decided for my generation when she had children to change that. And I think that's quite an important thing to notice because you can have a big difference from one generation to the next. But, I, I mean, your, your, your responses have just caused me to wonder for a lot of things like, is this the same thing for every Australian woman? Like, do they feel like in this current generation that every young woman or every girl feels like there is no hindrances to what they can do? Um, like coming back to your story of just being in the all girls school and you, in, in your family where you, you say that you never felt like there was a difference between a boy, boy child and a girl child. Would this be the same uh, for, for every Australian woman? It's, an, right it's an interesting question. I think I think it's the same experience for many, but not for all. I think we have our own challenges in Australia. It's something we have to work on. Not everybody has the same opportunity and experience, particularly coming through school. So we definitely have to keep working at it. We still see, unfortunately, discrimination and constraints and girls reaching the school age or finishing school and feeling these sort of self-limitations or active discrimination. So it's something that we're still working on, like many countries. Um, but for many, um, we have the good fortune, I think, to have a very mm. progressive approach, particularly, as I say, if you come from a household, a community and a school that's very enabling, then it's obviously a wonderful privilege um, to be in that position, but it's something we want for everybody. Nice. Um, so you, you mentioned self 
uh, self-limitations. Would mm -hmm. you like to to delve a little bit into that? Well, I think it's it, it's I think it's a result of being brought up in an environment or in an educational environment where the, the constraints are there, the opportunities are not there, so that by the time, particularly for girls coming to the end of their schooling, they rule themselves out of opportunities. Right. Um, they they stop. They don't even. They don't even think beyond the constraints because it's been so much a part of their upbringing mm. or their education that that's something for boys to do or that's something for men to do, that they don't even see themselves, um, see those opportunities as something applying to them. I think that's very sad because that's obviously right. a, big, a big part of what we all have to work with to change those attitudes. Amazing. I, I think your story and mine almost resonates where you say your mom didn't have the, mm -hmm. the same opportunities mm -hmm. and she determined that she would allow her girl child, that is you, to have access yeah. to education. Like my mom is a seventh grader. Uh, mm -hmm. She finished school at, at the seventh grade. But when we, when my father died, before I was born, mm -hmm. my mother fought for eight of us to go to school, mm -hmm. which is a story that's amazing, right? However, in Zimbabwe as well, we have communities or families because they didn't go to school and the parents sometimes fail to be able to fight or to find reason to push their own kids to go to school. Is, is this the same in Australia where your mom was able to, uh, to send you to school because she couldn't and where my mom was the same, but they're also... In Zimbabwe, parents will probably don't push their children as much. Yeah. Would that be the situation in Australia? I, th I think it's a combination of things. I think it's, and there are, as you say, there's a lot of interesting parallels there, yes. but a lot of it comes down to firstly the decision of that parent, in this case of the mothers. They make mm. obviously a conscious decision to place a premium on education, which is a wonderful thing, and, it, and they right. decide they're going to work really hard mm -hmm. to make that work. I think for many, though, it's very tough because of the environment isn't very yes. enabling. As you mm -hmm. say, there's a lot of pressures mm -hmm. in terms of basic earning your livelihood then there's other pressures that can detract from that. Mostly in Australia, we have very good education, mm. um, very good education system available for everybody. Um, so it is, I think the availability of high quality education is a right. really important thing. It's a big starting point for most in Australia. Um, so the decisions aren't perhaps quite as tough for many, but I still think placing a premium on education and deciding right. that you're going to do the best for your children is something that each family ultimately has to decide. Amazing. So you probably know that I run a non-profit for girls, t Tally, where we are running a campaign called Every Child in School. Mm. So on that note, we're going to take a break and we'll follow up on this discussion. Viewer, don't go away. This is exciting. <laughs> 